Hello and welcome to the channel and I'm here for a list video for you guys. This is a throwback list video. I have seen other people um, who do what I do on YouTube who do these type of throwback list videos so I figured that I would start doing them more as well. So for this video I thought we would go over in my opinion the best albums that have released in the year 2003. Now, 2003, I thought, was a very good year for uh, music. Now, unfortunately, I was not into rock or metal in the year 2003 since, you know, I was still really young. I was like seven or something like that, you know, so... And I really didn't get into metal uh, much later in life as well. So, yeah, um, this list, it's in no particular order, I don't think. I got about eight albums here, so... Let me know what albums would make uh, your list as the best albums of the year 2003. So let's go ahead and get started with this list. So I think we'll begin with Linkin Park, Meteora. Now, I think when a lot of people make their uh, top lists of 03, this album would be very high on that list. Uh, I know there's some people that even say that this is the best album of the year 2003. For me, I don't know if I would say it's my number one of that year, but it is definitely one of the best. I think it would definitely make the top five, at least. But yeah, this is uh, my favorite Linkin Park album, and it is easily one of their best. Of course, rest in peace to Chester. This album has some of their best tracks, of course, like Don't Stay, Somewhere I Belong, Hit the Floor, Breaking the Habit, uh, From the Inside, and Numb. All really great songs. I mean, there's not really a weak song on the album. Um, now, the song Nobody's Listening, I've never been the biggest fan of, but I wouldn't say that song is bad. So, yeah, Meteora by Linkin Park, definitely a great album. So next, we got Deftones and their self-titled album. This is one of my least favorite Deftones albums, uh, if not my least favorite, but... Even in saying that, I still think it's a very good album. Deftones is one of those bands that don't make bad albums. So, yeah, even this one, even though it's probably their weakest, I still think is very good. I mean, you got Minerva, that's uh, a popular song for them. Uh, you also got Battle Axe and Bloody Cape, also very good songs. This album is not as memorable as other Deftones albums, of course, but... I still think this is a very strong album, and it has some very good songs from the band. Um, but there are other albums that I would very much rather return to from Deftones. But they're self-titled. I still think I still think it's a very good album. So next we got King Crimson, "The Power to Believe." Of course, the final King Crimson album, progressive rock legends, and. I'd say that this is a very good final bow for King Crimson. This is a pretty good uh, finale for the band. It's, of course, got the song um, Eyes Wide Open, which is an excellent song. Uh, I think this is maybe my favorite King Crimson song of their modern era, or at least, you know, the, you know, uh, the best song that they've done in the uh, 2000s. So, yeah, definitely a great song. Of course, you got Level 5 and many others. This album is rather heavy for um, King Crimson as well, so yeah, definitely really great stuff. So, uh, not my favorite King Crimson album by any means, but it still is a very good album, and I do like this one a lot, so yeah, um, definitely great stuff. So, The Power to Believe by King Crimson. Next, we got Dream Theater, Train of Thought. This album had to make the list, of course. I mean, Dream Theater is probably one of my favorite bands, and they probably are my favorite progressive metal band, uh, which I know might be, you know, kind of a mainstream uh, opinion since Dream Theater is um, one of the uh, the biggest progressive metal bands, if not, you know, the uh, most successful one out there. But Train of Thought, it's still a very good album. Uh, this is Dream Theater's heaviest album, for sure. Um, this is not my favorite Dream Theater album. I do think the album is actually a tad overrated, dare I say, uh, because there's a lot of people that say that this is one of their best. I personally don't know if I would go that far. Uh, maybe it's just, you know, the fact that, you know, it's, you know, it's on the heavier side and it's not as proggy and 
you know, um, some of the songs just uh, are a little long or whatever, which, I mean, there's not really a weak song on the album. I mean, I can't really make any complaints with the album. I don't know. It's just, for some reason, not one of my personal favorites. Um, but I still, I still enjoy everything from this album. It's just, to me, it's not one of their best. But this album does have some very strong tracks, of course, like As I Am, which is one of their uh, most popular tracks, very catchy, and it's just awesome. It's an awesome track. You also got This Dying Soul, uh, Endless Sacrifice, and Vacant, which is just a short uh, ballad, and I think, um, I think it's a very strong track. I mean, uh, the emotion that it has, it's, it's really intriguing. So yeah, Train of Thought by Dream Theater. I think it's a very good album. Like I said, not my favorite Dream Theater album, but I still think it's very, very solid. So this album had to make the list. Next, we got Queensryche with Tribe. Now, some people may not have this album on the list because, well, um, I think the majority of the consensus would say that Queensryche has not released a good album since Empire or at least Promised Land, which I think is a fair thing to say. Um, I would say that Prom Promised Land was actually their last really, really great album, but after that... They had some good albums here and there, but, um, you know, nothing that, you know, I guess was mind-blowing, I guess. Yeah, this is one of the, I guess, just more decent albums from the band, I guess. Definitely not a bad album, though. I think there's some very strong stuff on the album, of course, like uh, Open, Desert Dance, uh, The Art of Life, which I think is pretty underrated. That's probably my favorite song on the album, too. Uh, Doing Fine is a pretty decent album closer. I mean, it's not one of the best songs on the album or anything. I would say it's at least an honorable mention, though. But yeah, Tribe, uh, it has some pretty good stuff, I think. Um, to me, this was actually the last uh, Jeff Tate album with Queensryche that's actually worth a crap, in my opinion. So yeah, not a bad album, though. So Tribe by Queensryche. Next, we got Iron Maiden, Dance of Death. Uh, kind of an underrated album from Iron Maiden, in my opinion, of course. I mean, I think if, you know, when people uh, name at least, you know, their favorite metal albums of 2003, this album is, I would say, almost always on um, those people's list because this is a really great album. It really is. And it's an album that's grown on me a lot. Um, there's some people that say that... Um, this is their least favorite of the 2000s era of Maiden, but not for me. Uh, my least favorite of 2000s Maiden would probably be A Matter of Life and Death, but I think that album is okay, though. But Dance of Death, I still think it's a very, very good album, I think. Not as good as the album that came before, which was Brave New World, but still a very strong album, I think. Um, of course, it's got really great songs like Rainmaker, No More Lies. I mean, No More Lies is... It's got to be one of the best songs of Iron Maiden's modern time. Uh, you also got uh, the, the iconic title track. I mean, the title track is just, it's just epic. It's an epic song, and I think there's a lot of people that can agree with that. Uh, you also got Face in the Sand and Passchendaele and Journeyman. Just excellent stuff. So Dance of Death by Iron Maiden, definitely a really good album. Uh, not one of Maiden's best by any means, but I still think it's good. Uh, so next we get into some more modern stuff, some more modern metal. Uh, we go into some more metalcore territory, I guess. So next we got Trivium, Ember to Inferno. Now this album, I really don't return to it that much because I think that Trivium has just They've done better than this, I think. I think there's a lot of people that can agree with that. Uh, I think a lot of people can agree uh, with me when I say that I think that this is one of Trivium's weakest albums, but that's not saying much because Trivium is another band that has never released a bad album. But yeah, this album, I still think it's solid. It's a really good debut. Um, of course, uh, you know, the band does a really good job at what they do in this album and it's actually very strong for a debut album you know for metalcore because i've noticed with um 
most metalcore bands, it usually is their debut that is their weakest, if not at least one of their weakest. And that's definitely the case with uh, Trivium and even the next band that's on this list. But yeah, um, still a very good album though, of course. You got uh, the title track. Now the title track was actually the first Trivium song that I ever heard, and that is one of my favorites on the album. Uh, you also got Requiem, which is also good, Pillars of Serpents, and If I Could Collapse the Masses, and this album is pretty heavy too, probably one of Trivi uh, Trivium's heaviest albums. Yeah, like I said, it's not as good as other Trivium albums, but it's still very good. So Ember to Inferno by Trivium. So lastly for this list, we got As I Lay Dying, Frail Words Collapse, and once again, like I said, um, this is another band where they didn't really have a very strong uh, debut album. I mean, I would say even more worse than uh, Ember to Inferno, obviously. I mean, Ember to Inferno is a masterpiece compared to As I Lay Dying's debut, but we don't talk about that one. <laughs> but this, uh, this is their second album, of course, and this is definitely a big improvement from uh, As I Lay Dying's debut album, for sure. Um, they just got a lot of things right on this album. I would say that this is one of their heaviest albums, too. And the first As I Lay Dying song that I ever heard and the song that got me into the band is on this album, 94 Hours. I mean, if, um, if, uh, if I were to try to get someone into metalcore, I would maybe show them that song or at least um just tell them to check out the as i lay dying discography i mean that's really all that you need to know of course because you know when it comes to metalcore i mean as i lay dying is almost like the the pinnacle of the subgenre i mean they're like one of the bands that do it best i think they are of course an early 2000s metalcore band and early 2000s metalcore to me in my opinion is really the only good metalcore but yeah, 94 Hours, really great song, really great opening track, but there's also uh, songs like Forever, uh, Undefined, which I think is kind of underrated, uh, Behind Me Lies Another Fallen Soldier, the beginning and uh, the closing track. Um, definitely a lot of really great songs on the album. So Frail Words Collapse by As I Lay Dying. This album had to make the list. So let me know what you guys think. Uh, what are your favorite albums that came out in the year 2003? Uh, feel free to let me know. And what do you think of this list? So with that being said, thanks for watching. Have a nice day and take care.